How's it going guys? I'm Jared and welcome back to Trash Classics. Now, those of you with even a passing fancy for PC gaming have probably heard whispers of the Stalker franchise, a series of games known for being difficult, buggy, and perplexing. But even among those who know of its existence, there are few who have taken the plunge into Stalker's intriguing world. And hopefully, I can change that today. Well guys, strap on your gas masks and load up your spare clips because today, we're taking a trip into the zone. Developed by a team in the Ukraine called GSC Game World, Shadow of Chernobyl was the first game in the Stalker series, and to my knowledge, one of the only games to come close to Duke Nukem Forever's storied development time. I remember seeing trailers showing off the game's many features as early as 2001, and by the time the game actually released, it had been six years, and I'd long since forgot about it. Mostly based on a Russian movie called Stalker, which was itself based on a series of sci-fi novels called A Roadside Picnic, the Stalker games take place 20 some odd years after the meltdown in the nuclear power plant in Chernobyl. The game takes liberties with this real world tragedy by setting itself in an alternate timeline where there was a second and even more powerfully disastrous event in the reactor, which spread immeasurable amounts of radiation across a 30 kilometer area around it dubbed the Exclusion Zone, or The Zone for short. A stalker is a person who sneaks into the zone illegally in order to scavenge for artifacts, which are items created by the intense radiation of the zone. These artifacts often possess strange, otherworldly attributes and are highly sought after in the scientific community researching the zone. In Shadow of Chernobyl, you play as the Marked One, a stalker who has lost all of his memories after being revived from a near-death state. This one seems to be alive. What a lucky guy. The only clue to your identity is a driving determination to kill another stalker by the name of Straylock. From these simple beginnings, you're left on your own to explore the zone and discover its secrets, hoping that they may give you clues to your own identity. The Stalker series as a whole handles its storylines much like the first Silent Hill game, where there is a core narrative told to the player, but the bulk of the story is up to you to discover. Those of you with a knack for exploration and a curious mind will find a much more substantial experience with Stalker than those who focus on just beating the game. And that's the beauty of Stalker. The goal of the game isn't to get to the end, it's to explore the world you've been dropped into and try to piece together some kind of reason for everything you see. As far as gameplay goes, Shadow of Chernobyl is a first person shooter, but you fans of the genre would do well not to approach it like a typical FPS. More often than not, running into a situation guns blazing will result in an early grave, as a couple of well-aimed hits are more than enough to bring you down. To really get anywhere in the game, it's important that you approach it as more of a survival simulator. In lieu of fast, white-knuckle shootouts, SOC gives you grueling difficulty and realism. Suddenly, you're not worried about executing enemies in elaborate ways, instead making sure to keep yourself fed and looting corpses for precious ammo and supplies. And guns aren't the efficient death dealers you're used to in other shooters. Firearms found in the zone have realistic accuracy and effective ranges. Even things like acceleration and bullet drop-off come into play when fighting at long distances. And all of this typically applies to skirmishes with other stalkers. When confronted with the mutants created by the zone's radiation, it's almost always an up-close and personal affair. This means that rare long-range rifle you just looted from a veteran stalker may as well be a paperweight. Of course, mutants and stalkers aren't your only enemies. During your travels, you'd be wise to watch out for anomalies, which are pockets of distorted physics and elemental hazards. Radiation is also a constant worry, as some areas are still saturated and can fry you from the inside out if you don't keep an ear out for your Geiger counter. Shadow of Chernobyl's focus on realism doesn't stop at its gameplay either. During development, the creators took several trips to the Ukraine's real-world exclusion zone and studied the look and feel of the Chernobyl reactor and its surroundings. 
The result of this maniacal obsession with realism is the most detailed and fully realized game world I have ever experienced. Everything from dilapidated and rusted architecture to the altered plant and animal life makes the zone feel like a living, breathing world. Ridiculous amounts of time also went into environmental details like grass swaying with the wind, thunder, lightning, rain, and varying levels of day and night. Thanks to some clever AI, the rest of the inhabitants of the zone aren't shy about interacting with each other either. In your travels, you may find random loners having it out with patrolling members of rival factions or mutants overtaking an area once controlled by stalkers. These random elements make the zone an unpredictable and nerve-wracking place. One of the best pieces of evidence to this effect is what happened to me when recording footage for this review. Late one night, I was making a run through the wild territory when I heard a very odd noise and saw some strange lights. Now, I must have sank hundreds of hours into this game, and at this point, I thought I'd seen it all. But as I climbed up to get a better idea of what I was hearing, I saw a blue flash in the sky and everything lit up like it was daytime. Some say this might be a comet, or it might have been a nod back to the book the game was based on. Either way, I was equal parts amazed and really creeped out. Those of you familiar with the game and watching the footage may have noticed, but for everyone else, I do have to mention that I'm using the Shadow of Chernobyl Complete mod, which is a community project that brought higher res textures, more balanced gameplay, better skyboxes, and a metric shit ton of other improvements. But the best addition is the elimination of the rampant bugs that were present in the vanilla release. It doesn't matter if you're a seasoned vet or just planning on dipping your toes into the series, download and apply the complete mod. It is legitimately the way the game was meant to be played. With that out of the way, I'm sure you're looking for some downsides here, and don't worry, I'm no delusional fanboy. Shadow of Chernobyl has its fair share of problems, much of which have to do with the large scale and high level of interactivity of its environments. For example, you may find areas that have improper physics or graphical bugs like crosshatching visible when I zoom in on this building. But I have to say the best glitch I've experienced so far is when I was rounding this corner here, when all of a sudden... Little did I know this gun could break the laws of physics. Man, the zone's a weird place. Other than these glitches, every part of the first game in the Stalker series was custom made to draw you, the player, into its world. Exploring the zone became an obsession for me after a while. I wanted to talk to everyone, discover every hidden stash and personal log as they each gave little clues about my surroundings. Walking through an area and seeing the muzzle flashes of a heated firefight, listening to the environment for the telltale signs of nearly invisible mutant bloodsuckers, memorizing anomaly placements, and exploring crashed helicopters and broken down buildings. These are the memories that have stuck with me after years of playing the same game over and over again. And the worst part about writing this review is trying to find the words for an experience that genuinely leaves me speechless. So much of Stalker's appeal is subtle and almost unnoticeable without close inspection, and so I go into this video understanding that I can never do the game justice. I could go on for hours about how amazing the game is, about how cool it is that you have to holster your weapon before talking to or trading with anyone, about the replay value derived from the game's random nature, or about the added realism of deteriorating armor and guns. But I've already dragged this video on long enough. I've said it once and I'll say it again, Stalker, Shadow of Chernobyl, and its sequels have the most unique and thought-provoking setting in video games, period. No matter how much you love your multi-million dollar AAA blockbusters, or how much emotional attachment you derive from the latest set-piece driven action game, I can assure you without a shadow of a doubt, when it comes to immersive games that suck you into their world, Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl has no equal. Those of you who've perked an ear to any part of this review, I implore you, head to the Steam store or your favorite eBay reseller and play this game. Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl is easily one of the most important, well-made, and underrated PC games of all time. And now that we've reached the end, Shadow of Chernobyl will return to the zone, both a seasoned stalker and a trashed classic. Alright guys, thanks for sticking with this long episode till the end. For those of you checking this channel out for the first time, first off, hi, how's it going? Second, feel free to click that subscribe button to find similar reviews of underrated or unheard of games. As for you subscribers, no matter if you've been with me since the beginning or last week, I have to give you a hearty thank you. Since my first review, you guys have made this process a pleasure. Your comments and encouragement keep me striving to improve this little show, and because of you guys, I plan on keeping this channel going well into the future. So thank you, and I'll see you guys later.